Hello everyone and thanks for joining me today. My name is Heather Hilliard and I am the co-founder of Caliber Leadership Systems as well as the Striving Styles Personality System. Over our 25 years of working closely with executive teams and individual leaders on behavioral change, leadership, and organizational development, combined with our research on personality styles, neuroscience, and the emotional drivers of behavior, we have come to identify four distinct dysfunctional leadership styles. Each has its own challenges as well as its own path towards development. Each represents a different negative impact on the organizations in which they lead. Impacts that often can lead to dysfunction within the organization or even just a failure to achieve the potential of the organization. In this webinar, the fourth in our series on dysfunctional leaders, we are focusing on the collaborative, nurturing, and subjective matriarchal leader. Again, I just want to clarify that our focus in this webinar is on the dysfunctional aspects of this particular leadership style. So how it is that the matriarchal leader behaves when they are working out of their self-protective uh, system and fear-based system and, and what that does for the organizations and for the people that work with them and how it is that we can shift them out of that dysfunctional behavioral pattern so that can, they can self-actualize and be optimally effective in our organizations. During this webinar, we will explore the characteristics of this leadership style. We will also take a look at what it means for the organizations in which they lead. And what's the cost implications for the business? We will give you the top six signs that you are, in fact, working with a dysfunctional matriarchal leader. We will then provide you with a few key tips on how to survive working for the matriarchal leader who's operating from their dysfunctional patterns. Then we will look at some very specific tips on how to change the behavior as it is possible if you find yourself working with this particular leadership style. It is our hope that by the end of this webinar on matriarchal leaders, you will be able to identify them by their behavior and impact, know how to deal with them personally when they are operating from their dysfunctional behavioral patterns in order to minimize that impact on you and really understand if you are in a position to coach or develop these individuals, what it actually takes to change their behavior. They bring great strengths to our organizations. So shifting them out of this dysfunctional behavioral pattern is critical in order for us to get the most from these particular leaders. As the name implies, the matriarchal leader refers to a motherly leadership style, with dominant females using their position, power, and relationships to control and care for employees. And these employees are in turn expected to conform to the cultural norms of the matriarchal leader. The matriarchal leader provides supportive leadership, spending time listening, empathizing, offering advice, and helping direct reports however they can. Now it's important to understand that the matriarchal leader is, can be either male or female, and not all females have this as their particular leadership style. Matriarchal leaders tend to be right brain dominant, and their dysfunction arises from using this part of their brain excessively to make sure that the workplace is harmonious and that everyone is happy. Their priority is a focus on relationships, on service, and on building common ground and a shared sense of purpose. They're engaging, talkative, and persuasive. As a result of their right brain dominance, they are bound to the positive and negative behaviors associated with that particular side of the brain. They tend to support the notion that traditional right brain behaviors of women are right and preferred while other behaviors and ways of expressing oneself are wrong. The functional qualities and needs rooted in the right brain include empathy, bonding, harmony, which what drives consensus in the organizations of these leaders, creativity, holistic orientation, subjective, 
cooperation, collaboration. And these are all the hallmark of the matriarchal leader. However, in their dysfunction, they negate the value of individuality. They fail to be direct or decisive. They move to eliminate competitiveness and goal-driven behavior. Think about all the sports leagues that are out there structured purely for fun where no one keeps score and really it doesn't matter how well you do as long as you've had a good time and everyone is happy. These are the brainchild of the matriarchal leadership style. So this leadership style really is concerned to an extent that is too much um, for the experience of employees and putting the needs of people before the needs of the business. Their need for harmony and affiliation becomes disruptive uh, to the organization, especially as the organization grows and people strive to achieve their own agenda. So the matriarchal leader really is um, driven by their own agenda and we see a more emotionally driven behavior coming out of this leadership style or more overtly emotionally driven behavior from this style than from the other three. They foster dependence in their employees and as I said really an excessive focus on the people at the expense of the business and an excessive focus on again the happiness and the harmony of the people. They fail to plan, which completely undermines the success of the organization and of the team which they are leading. However, it is important to remember that this dysfunctional leadership style is simply an approach to self-protection. The matriarchal leader is able to develop and ultimately change their behavior so as not to be working out of this dysfunctional pattern and therefore no longer having the negative impact on the organizations in which they lead. While the matriarchal leader leverages their authority and results orientation to drive organizational success, their autocratic style, autocratic style has negative implications and costs for the organizations in which they work. Here are some of the key implications. First and foremost, they stifle innovation. Their insistence that everyone be on the same page shuts down originality. And they have no tolerance for independence and autonomy in others. Business process is slowed by their need for excessive collaboration and their focus on getting buy-in from everyone. One of my clients talked about the fact that it can take them years to work through the process of getting buy-in. And by the time the idea is finally ready and everyone's agreed to it, it's either been watered down so much it's no longer going to have the impact or it's taken so long that either something new has come up or people have lost their energy for seeing it through. So really valuable time and money is spent in meetings and decisions are delayed due to the lack of total agreement because the matriarchal leader wants to make sure that they get it all the way. By not delegating authority and decision making through the ranks, uh, decision making is also slowed by the matriarchal leaders as they become a bottleneck watching everything having to flow through them. Their need to be helpful causes them to hire and keep low performing employees on board. They're driven by emotions, and so they tend to feel sorry for their employees who aren't doing very well. And this will cause high-performing employees to leave. So the mediocre workforce is the outcome as competent employees move on, but those that are not performing as well, who are feeling well taken care of by the matriarchal leader, stay. The organization of the environment is chaotic, and this is due to the lack of planning and the failure to hold people accountable. Emotions are used to keep employees in line rather than objective performance management systems. So when energy goes into complaining and talking about the issues, and almost to a degree sometimes it feels like gossiping about the issues rather than actually resolving them. And so the organizations that are run by the matriarchal leaders tend to see a loss in market share over time, or really even just a failure to achieve the true potential because of the subjective reasoning and the priority of people before profit. 
So how do you know that you are working with a matriarchal leader? And what does that mean to your organization, again, if you are? Because it's under, important to understand both the behavior of that dysfunctional behavioral pattern and what it means for the business. Matriarchal leader avoid the very things that employees need in order to feel stable and to be effective. They create chaos, emotionality, insecurity, and frustration with their employees and peers. So here are the six signs that you should watch for to tell if you are working for a matriarchal leader. First and foremost, you cannot do anything independently. While matriarchal leaders say that they are all about empowering their employees, should they be operating from their dysfunction, they are more about making everyone conform. They are collaborative and insist on inclusion and collective decision making to ensure that everyone is conforming and doing things their way. Those employees who complain about how long meetings take or inefficiencies can actually be made to feel guilty or punished by the matriarchal leader. They can take it personally when an employee acts independently and makes a decision without consulting them. They really take it as a personal affront. A client of ours who is the CEO of a, a fast-growing organization hired a CFO following this expansion of the business. Once on the job, the CFO sent a letter and a follow-up email to all of the suppliers and clients introducing himself and his role in the organization. While he had told her that he was going to do this, she had not given him permission to do so nor had she vetted his letter with the rest of the leadership team to make sure that everybody was on board. She was furious with him and felt that this was an absolute betrayal of her trust. He was dismissed soon after this event. So what's the impact? Well, really, it's the slowing down and the ineffectiveness of the decision making. Because the matriarchal leader tries to get everyone on the same page before making a decision and doesn't allow employees to make decisions on their own despite their expertise, decision making can come to a complete halt. Inputs and feedback may either be subjective uh, or objective, but they have the potential to create disharmony amongst team members, again, slowing everything right down. Matriarchal leaders will either try to see everyone's perspective or come down emotionally hard on the side of the employee who has an opinion that is too different from the rest of the team. Matriarchal leaders actually take it personally when an employee fails to deliver on a project or work product, especially after they've helped the person and supported them in order to be successful. They tend to talk about their feelings rather than providing objective feedback about what needs to change in order to improve. When employees don't live up to the, their expectations, they take it personally, blaming themselves for this happening and, and letting the employee off the hook. They can be so emotional about the issue that employees don't actually know what the real issue is. Another example with another client of ours, after months of working with team members on a proposal for a substantial project, our client was at her wit's end. She couldn't figure out why her team members were so inadequate and had blasted them several times, telling them how upset she was with them because they were letting her down. She would storm out of her office in a rage, leaving them at a loss for what they needed to do to correct the problem. Then she would do the work on her own, leaving her people to feel guilty and inadequate. So the outcome of this particular behavior is mediocre performance. Direct reports often find themselves confused and unsettled because it's really difficult to know where the matriarchal leader is coming from. Indirect and emotional communication actually stops employees in their tracks and they don't push for success. They don't feel as though they are on secure footing with their leader. And when we can't trust our leader, we actually start to shut down our own performance. Employees often think, did I do something wrong? Or should I have known they wanted that done that way? Those who need a more objective work environment move on. Matriarchal leaders 
need to be needed. And they like to take the position of queen bee or king of the hill if they're a male. They want to be the person who everyone comes to for help. If it isn't a parent, they will try to find a vulnerability or area of weakness in others just so that they can help them. They will offer their help and tell you what help you need without you even asking for it. They can be meddlesome, intrusive, and even bossy, trying to make direct reports and peers even feeling capable of doing anything without their help. If you don't need them, you offend them. A client of ours that's an editor for a magazine put a lot of energy into the people she considered having potential while actually ignoring her high-performing uh, direct reports. Because, of course, from her perspective, they didn't need her. When her high performers complained to the matriarchal leader that the people that she was working on in terms of their development were really failing to deliver for the team, she shut them down, telling them to be more supportive and empathetic of others. She came to us for help when the turnover at the magazine doubled in a matter of a few months. So what's the impact for the organization or for the team or for the individuals? Well, really in disengagement. So because matriarchal leaders fail to bring out the best in their high potential employees or employees that are more autonomous, again, because they don't feel needed by these employees, um, it then causes a shift in, in the level of engagement of these folks. If an employee doesn't need the help of the matriarchal leader, they can fall out of favor. They can be cut off. They can be sidelined as a result of it. And because they tend to praise excessively, you know, that every little thing is great and amazing and wonderful, they cause some employees to believe that everything they do is absolutely amazing. Or they frustrate their high achievers by praising them for routine parts of the job. And so the high performer becomes dismissive of the feedback. This instability and these mixed messages really does lower the performance bar substantially on their teams and leads to losing high performers and keeping the mediocre ones. So tip number four, they... Uh, With the matriarchal leaders, they have a real tendency to be disorganized and scattered. So as we said before, their dominant right brain um, requires them to connect up and use the the functions that are more about planning and organizing and deciding. So because they function from their right brain, which is more relational and holistic, rather than planful and organized, the outcome is that level of chaos um, in in the environments in which they lead. So they may have lists of goals that they need to achieve and deadlines that they have to reach, but they don't always give them to their staff. And and the reason for this that we hear over and over and again from this style is, well, they don't want to upset their staff or they don't want to put too much pressure or stress on them. And so as the result, the matriarchal leader carries the entire burden. One of my clients went so far as to say he didn't want to share information about what was going on in the marketplace um, with his executive team for fear that it would upset them and scare them too much. So this is the working out of this dysfunction of the right brain of the matriarchal leader, wanting to be liked, wanting to keep everyone happy, wanting to keep the harmony. So they get so focused on helping and doing things for others that they really do fail to plan, organize, or complete their own work on time. A client of ours who owned a uh, manufacturing company was actually beginning to lose her market share and status in the marketplace because she couldn't get her employees to meet her deadlines. She was spending so much time helping her staff that she didn't realize that she actually wasn't leading the business by planning, delivering expectations, and, and being out ahead of the group so that they could actually deliver for her. So she really did believe that the solution to their poor performance was to get in and help them more and show them more and do it with them more rather than managing them to expectations, giving deadlines, and staying involved with them in order to hold them accountable. So just as would be the case if you as a parent were taking care of your children in that way, what happens is is you foster dependence. 
When we don't define expectations clearly enough for employees or for others to, to rise to those expectations, if we don't give expectations for the work that is to be accomplished, what ends up happening is, is that our employees, like our children, stay dependent that the leader needs to do it for us. The leader needs to take care of us. And so as a result, you you can tell that you're working for a dysfunctional matriarchal leader is when people stop trying to plan or to meet deadlines. They just wait. They wait for the matriarchal leader to come in, to take care of it, to take care of them, and that's the level of dependency. And some people may mistake that for apathy, but it's just that the dependency has left the people feeling like they just can't do it themselves and someone else them in their leader, in this case, must come in and take it, take it over. Now, the matriarchal leader doesn't see this as their fault. But they get upset when it happens and then they'll take over from the employees, leaving the employees feeling like, you know, they just can't get it right. While this will make the matriarchal leader feel needed because, of course, they're stepping in and they're taking care of everything and everyone needs my help and, oh, look at how helpful I'm being. It also causes employees to actually doubt their abilities and to look to their leader to help or do things for them that really they are competent to do for themselves and, and really, you know, they're able to meet and plan their de own deadlines and to work in that particular way. For the, the, the next one is really about, um, you can tell when you're working with a, a matriarchal leader because when they act from their dysfunction, they can manipulate others to achieve their goals. Now, some of you might take offense to the fact that we talk about this particular leadership style using emotions um, and emotional reactions to issues in order to, to get to the end result that they want. But this is, is part of their um, personality orientation when it's, again, used out of that self-protective or fear-driven behavioral pattern. They can demonstrate sincere caring and really hold their direct reports in high esteem. However, they are not above using flattery or charm to get them to do the things that they want them to do. So they will manipulate their employees in a number of different ways. They will also guilt to get people to do things for them bemoaning how much work they have on their plate. I have one client who um, every the first thing out of uh, his mouth every single time is, I'm so busy, I've got so much to do, you won't believe how busy I am, it's just so crazy, I've never seen it this busy in all my years of working here. So if you think about what that does when you go to sit and meet with someone to plan something out or to problem solve, and that's the first thing that comes from them. What are you likely to do? Take it back. Take care of it. Don't worry. I've got it. Because people don't know how to work through the emotional reaction um, that, that they're experiencing coming from the, the matriarchal leader. So the other thing that the matriarchal leader does is they actually keep a scorecard of favors. So tracking what have I done? What have you done? And they use that as currency at some point to get what it is they need. And should someone disappoint them, they can react emotionally leaving people afraid to say no again. Matriarchal leaders can go so far as to become cold toward the offending party and are actually known to carry a grudge against team members who have created opposition or disagreement. They cast silent disapproval, a behavior that comes across as maternal and shaming the employee in the process. A COO of a client of ours was attempting to get his direct reports in the habit of planning and attending weekly meetings. One of his country managers consistently showed up late, was unprepared for the meetings, and then proceeded to challenge the COO's decisions in front of the rest of his team. So instead of meeting offline to deal with his country manager, he cut him off. He refused to take his calls. He refused to answer any of his emails or even respond to requests for meetings. Now this, of course, got in the way of critical decisions that had to be made, making the country manager look ineffective. So what's the result to the emotional reactions to issues that, are, that the matriarchal leader has in their dysfunctional pattern? Well, really, again, direct reports become confused and unsettled. It really is difficult to know where the matriarchal leader is coming from. 
So indirect and emotional communication actually stops employees, as I said earlier, and the focus for the employee is on what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Do I not understand what I'm supposed to do? Am I not competent? And again, that causes them to shift their focus onto pleasing their manager rather than actually trying to do their best work. So the sixth sign that you're working for a dysfunctional matriarchal leader is the whole one big happy family perspective. Matriarchal leaders expect direct reports to know what the rules of the family are and to follow them appropriately. They expect everyone to espouse the party line that we are all one big happy family and not raise any issues that indicate the contrary. So no sharing of the dirty laundry. Should someone not behave this way, they are subjected to all of the punishments of a real family, including yelling, berating, shaming, distancing, cutting off. In one of our clients, there, um, a, the director that we were working for in a not-for-profit organization came to us for coaching, and she was working for a matriarchal leader who was in the habit of yelling at anyone who opposed or challenged her ideas or a- anyone that brought issues to her attention. And now at first our client tried to influence and persuade her boss. And then she actually resorted to yelling back at her when she couldn't get any traction. She couldn't believe her own behavior and wanted help in both understanding herself and guidance on how it is she could actually work with this matriarchal leader. So what's the implication of this in living in that pretend state or that false state of of harmony, but because we're all one big happy family? Well, because these leaders need everyone to live in their idealized version of one big happy family, they really expect everyone to be there with them. And so employees are afraid to bring issues to their attention because they fear the emotional response that they may get from the matriarchal leader. They feel that they have to pretend that everything is great. And really what we, we see here is an inauthentic, unhealthy work environment where conflict and power struggles end up going underground, just as they do in the dysfunctional family. So how do we survive working for a matriarchal leader? So now that you can recognize the fact that you are working with a matriarchal leader, working out of their dysfunctional behavioral pattern, uh, let's move on to talking about how to survive them. So the most important thing uh, that we coach clients around when they are in this situation with this type of dysfunctional leader or any, is that the most important thing is to maintain your own confidence. It can be very challenging. And when you don't, the cost to you is much greater. The fact is you will probably work for or with this leadership style at one point or another within your career. It's hard not to as they get promoted for their ability to get things done, to bring harmony, to bring groups together. They find their way to the top of certain types of organizations. Now, some of these leaders are entrepreneurs and they build successful companies that grow to a point. Others we find working in not-for-profit organizations, government agencies, uh, school leadership, um, and also in some of the um, uh, professions that are more right brain focused. So communications, uh, marketing, uh, customer service, uh, those sorts of elements where there's a really high orientation uh, towards the helping and the caring of others. So First and foremost, rule number one, don't go over their heads. Matriarchal behavior is self-limiting. It is always important to remember that this is a form of self-protective behavior triggered by fear. The motivation of the matriarchal leader is to maintain control over their own fears by staying connected to others through their values, behavior, and support. Becoming emotional causes their direct reports to either fear them or lose confidence in them. And it's difficult to understand the subjective reasoning that the matriarchal leader can use and their emotionally driven behavior. While employees like their matriarchal leader, they may try to help him or her by going to their direct boss for advice, so their boss's boss. Now, this will be seen as an act of absolute disloyalty by the matriarchal leader should they find out. 
they take things personally and it's so important to remember that and this will cause greater problems for you. It is always in their minds all about them. So what's important to remember is to respond and not react. Strong emotional reactions in you will simply cause them to become more emotional and to escalate further. So notice your feelings about their behavior and figure out how to approach it objectively and consistently. If you don't understand why the matriarchal leader is behaving the way they are, try to look at what disharmony or misalignment is going on. When introducing something to them, start by putting the two of you on common ground. For example, starting a conversation by saying, I know we are both frustrated by having missed the deadline, will get you a lot further than saying, you didn't make it clear we were supposed to have this project finished today. Often people walk on eggshells and let the matriarchal leader have their way without really trying to engage or manage them. So contrary to what you might feel like, your adaptive reaction to the matriarchal leader is not their fault. Your own fear can get in the way of your success in dealing with this manager, peer, or direct report. So again, being aware of that and remembering that a direct confrontation is adversarial and it will make it seem as though you are against them. So we always want to seek to find common ground. Where are we in agreement? How can we move from there? Many employees find that after working with the matriarchal leader for a period of time, that they start to become as subjective as their boss. And what this means is they don't try more objective approaches to ask for what it is that they or their department wants and needs. Bottom line, they're afraid of upsetting the matriarchal leader. So remember to take a professional approach to getting approval from this leader. This means you need to build a business case to demonstrate why what you want is needed and what the benefits will be when it's finished. While the reasons and benefits may seem perfectly obvious to you and others who are intimately involved with it, it may not be so obvious to the matriarchal leader. So being able to defend your proposal and influence their decision cannot be done when you come from a place of fear. And so moving to the objective and having your business case built actually puts you in a place of coming from strength. It doesn't cost us anything to make the effort to meet the needs of our leaders, especially the matriarchal leader. Knowing that they have a need to nurture and to help others and for collaboration creates the opportunity for you to go to them and run ideas by them, whether you need it or not. A client of mine recently brought a new uh, executive onto the executive team and there are actually two matriarchal leaders that are part of uh, this executive team. Um, And he's coming into a job that he's done before a couple of times in other organizations in the same industry, felt very confident about uh, his competence to take this on and to do it. But he had two matriarchal leaders that are his new colleagues uh, who to a degree have been involved in this function before him. So he had an initial discussion with them and then figured he, you know, it was good enough and and he could get, get on with what it was that he needed to do. What has actually been created, though, is a significant uh, dysfunction within the executive team because the matriarchal leaders, the two matriarchal leaders, were so upset and offended by his refusal to come to them in order to let them help him, that he would not come and collaborate with them on everything and that they wouldn't provide the opportunity for them to nurture him and develop him because they'd both been in the organization and in the industry quite frankly for a much longer time but given their needs as matriarchal leaders was to nurture and to support and to help and collaborate by refusing to do that unconsciously he really didn't, in not, not having a high need himself for collaboration, he just wanted to move to getting it done, he didn't involve them. And so now there's a, a huge conflict between them that they now have to work through and resolve because he didn't recognize the need in them and didn't actually work to meet the need. And so this is the challenging part of it is you may not need it, but they do and focusing on giving them what they need, even though it's not what you need. Okay. 
And finally, help them to define the issues. So when you're working with them, so, um, with a matriarchal leader, it really is important to understand that they need help focusing on the issues and not on their feelings. Empathizing with how they are feeling is important because we have to meet them where they are. But then we want to refocus them on the needs of the business so that you can get back onto, onto more solid ground with them. And so, so you can always tell when they're, they're coming in because they're complaining um, or they're talking about something that has happened and it, they're leading with those emotions. And, and, but you're not actually getting to what, what's the actual issue. Right? So what is the actual issue? What is it going on? What is it that we need to do to resolve this? And so if you just simply get caught up in their emotional um, response and their emotional communication, then you don't actually help to pull them out. And then you can end up feeling uh, quite uh, exhausted after that experience because you really don't know what you're supposed to do. And now you've taken on the emotions of, of your boss or, or your coworker. So really without help from others on defining the issues, the matriarchal leader really can can get lost in how they feel about the issue and rather than trying to figure out what is the actual problem to be solved and and it really we can't solve emotions we can only solve issues so how do we change the behavior of the matriarchal leader because of course this is a dysfunctional behavioral pattern that is triggered by fear so matriarchal leaders move into this set of behaviors or this set of dis this dysfunction because they are working to protect themselves and to stay in control of their situation and their environment and so that puts an excessive focus on things like as we said before on harmony on collaboration um, on, on really holding the group together and the relationship together. So we can change their behavior. So here are some of the key things that you need to keep in mind when we're working to change the behavior of the matriarchal leader. So first and foremost, and it may seem obvious, but manage their performance. And, and the reason why I start with this one is because it is amazing the number of clients I have that have matriarchal leaders reporting into them who will not and do not manage the performance of these direct reports. And they will manage the, the performance of their other direct reports who don't have this particular leadership style. And the reason for that is that it's like they come in and they don't know what to do with them. So for example, one of my clients has a, a direct report who whenever they sit down to talk about performance, she, all she does is talk about how busy she is, which I mentioned earlier. So so it is this whole, I'm so busy and I can't believe it and it's so, it's so much and I'm working so hard and I'm working so long and so then he feels guilty saying to her but you're not getting to this and you're not getting to that and where are you at with this and you promised you'd have this on time and and so it's a way of, of which you know he's then pushed out to avoid actually getting in and managing their performance and so as a result the matriarchal leader um, really isn't getting their behavior managed and because leaders are often um, afraid of upsetting their matriarchal leader in direct reports, they simply choose not to have honest dialogue about their performance. They won't be as direct with this style as they will with others. But it's absolutely critical that you move into managing their performance. Um, the other thing to keep in mind around managing their performance is to not allow them to hire insecure or inexperienced people. Um, because that allows them to lose themselves into being helpful with these others and trying to get these others up to speed rather than actually delivering on their own performance and their own performance expectations. When we look at providing leadership coaching to this particular leadership style, the focus needs to be on helping the matriarchal leader to develop skills for planning, decision making, and situational leadership. One of my clients who is the uh, the head of a, an operating group in, in an organization, um, and she's been doing this for, for several years, she doesn't put together business plans. And um, when she's asked to do so, uh, it creates such a panic in her um, that she finds, she either finds other excuses or she comes in and, and does an update on where her business unit is at, but there's never a go forward plan. And really... It's not something because of their bright brain domination, it's not something that they can simply go to a course and you're going to think that it's going to change. Leadership coaching is they actually need someone to come in and to show them and to do it with them. So for the first couple of times where the, while they're building the experience or the, the expertise, they need a lot of hand-holding in order to develop up. So the planning, learning how to make decisions without building consensus, and situational leadership. The other thing is, is that the matriarchal leader really needs to learn how to shift to 
a much more directive style to ensure that goals are achieved in a timely fashion. So understanding this idea of a directing, which is what we want our leaders to do, um, versus informing, which is the approach the matriarchal leader might take, is really important to their development. And this is something that often gets overlooked because they are very strong communicators, but their communication style is informative as opposed to directive. And directive means I'm telling you something so that you can actually go do it. So the uh, the matriarchal leader really isn't hardwired to define what is expected, when it's expected, or even to be clear on their decisions so that people can move to action. So coaching really helps them to get comfortable f- with the use of more directive language and speaking in a way that is more authoritarian and not leveraging the authority in their relationships, but really you know coming at it from that business authority perspective. So if you think about it this way, it's kind of the difference between saying to someone, I'm thinking of serving dinner at 6 versus saying, please come over at 5.30. So the latter is very directive. Please come over at 5.30. Okay, I know exactly what I need to do. I know when I need to be there. But when someone says to me, I'm thinking of serving dinner at 6, what does that mean? Do I come at 6? Do I come sooner because I don't want to show up just when dinner? So, so now the onus is on me to make a decision because the person hasn't been directive in their communication. Okay. And, and so this is where coaching is really useful uh, when the coach in particular understands the personality structure of the individual that they're working with. Assertiveness training. So not that most leaders can't use this, but matriarchal leaders in particular because they believe it is more important to be nice than to use their position power to manage performance. They need to take assertiveness training in order to have boundaries and to learn to say no without feeling guilty. They need the assertiveness in order to help them to understand where the boundary is between helping too much and helping enough. Um, And so this is what the assertiveness training will do for them. Oftentimes, the the success of a matriarchal leader really is the direct result of doing the employees' work for them when those employees fail to meet performance targets. And so the assertiveness training, too, really helps them to learn to deal with poor performance and to give consequences to these people that they like and and with whom they have a relationship that they want to keep in harmony without fearing the consequences of that that relationship being um, fractured. Uh, in one case, one of my um, matriarchal leader actually, clients actually put so much energy into being liked that she wouldn't initiate discussions about her own role, her contribution, and the, her area of the business with her direct boss. But it was interesting because she had no difficulty going to bat for her staff because in her mind that was her role was to take care of them. But when it came to putting herself in there and what did she need in order to be successful, she couldn't do that for fear that it would have consequences inside of her relationship with her boss. Of course, the use of 360 degree feedback is always helpful um, with the matriarchal leader, despite them being so easy to work for and work around and they're so nice and everybody likes them, they can really be so busy helping others that they don't think about their own needs of the, as a leader. And so the 360 brings them a different perspective, right? And, and shows them what are some of the things, some of the areas where they're not perhaps attending to it because they're so busy helping others. So really the process can demonstrate the impact of the behavior behavior that the matriarchal leader is having so that they don't deny their need for help and how it is that they're contributing to the issues. Of course, folks that like to help and like to help in the way that the matriarchal leader does because it's, you know, an innate need of theirs is to be helpful, it is very hard for them to step back and recognize when they need help themselves. And so the 360 feedback process can support this. It can also highlight the importance for more balance between the right brain people-focused leadership activities that come so naturally to the matriarchal leader and the left brain activities of planning, organizing, and defining. So that brings us to the end of our webinar on this nurturing um, and uh, supportive yet conformity demanding matriarchal leader and their dysfunctional behavioral pattern. And like leaders, organizations can also take on these characteristics as a whole and as a collective, and it can get woven into the culture of the organization where people can't see that there's a way to lead out of that. And and so uh, becoming quite stuck in that place of not being able to change things. Having a conversation at a a client training session yesterday, and we were talking about uh, this whole notion of work-life balance and the the fact that I said, well, if, if it's not working for the organization, perhaps it's time to put a new 
new definition around it. And it was like, oh, well, we, we can't do that. We'd upset people. And, and so there we are. So in their culture, it's a highly collaborative, consensus-oriented, keep everyone happy culture, which is, again, the dysfunction of the matriarchal leader showing up on a collective basis. And I said, well, aren't you the leaders of the organization? Don't you get to define these things? And it was like, yes, but so, so that's the fear, right? The fear is putting it in where the people are taking priority over the needs of the business. So we hope you found this uh, session helpful. We do have more information about the dysfunctional leadership styles. If you haven't checked out the other three uh, webinars, we have one on the uh, narcissistic leader, one on the avoidant leader, and one on the paternalistic leader as well. Um, and if you want more information or want to understand more about what actually drives behavior, of course, we do have our book, Who Are You Meant to Be?, which you can pick up at any bookstore. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you found the material useful as you consider your own experiences with the matriarchal leader and how you may support their development in your role in an organization or in whatever it is that you do. So again, if you want to learn more and stay in touch, please, I encourage you to sign up for our newsletter uh, and learn how to develop your leadership style, certainly by taking the Striving Styles Personality Assessment to find out which one of the four dysfunctions you may be prone to. Stay tuned for uh, more on the uh, continuing discussion about dysfunction. Uh, our next uh, webinar coming up is going to be focused on the entrepreneurial brain and the organizational dysfunction created by the entrepreneurial brain. Thanks again.